literally sitting on the toilet with a baby on your boob, post weaning depression. Your hormones go all wacky, find mom friends. And then the next day, the husband's like, oh, I'm so tired. And then you're just like, I wanna strangle you. Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I am so excited because I've been wanting to film this for a really long time. This video is going to be all the things that I wish I knew before having kids. If you have never been in my channel before, my name is Katherine. I make motherhood and lifestyle videos. I have two boys, Lincoln and Waylon. Lincoln is about to turn three and he has autism and Waylon is about to turn 18 months. So yeah, that's me and I am excited to just share the little bit of knowledge that I have gained over the last three years. Maybe help a new mom out there who is pregnant or just had a baby or something like that, hopefully. I definitely am not an expert. I just wanna say that this is just from my experience, but yeah, I know this is gonna be a lot of stuff, so let me just get straight into the video. All right, so the very first thing on my list is to trust your mom gut. You're gonna get a lot of opinions and they're gonna be coming from a good place most of the time, but they're gonna be coming from every which direction, every way, everybody is going to be giving you an opinion. You just have to kind of listen to your mom gut and do what's right for you. This could be about bottle feeding versus breastfeeding, what baby products to buy, where you send them to school, when you send them to school. That's what I'm dealing with right now. Even how you breastfeed, you might get opinions on. I got so many opinions starting day one. I just had to kind of learn to tune people out and say, this is what we're doing and this is what's working for us right now. Thank you so much for your advice. So I guess this does sound kind of silly that my first advice for you is don't listen to anyone else's advice, but I'm not gonna be giving you advice on when to send your kids to school and how to feed them, so don't worry. So the next thing that I wish I knew before having babies is to learn to go with the flow. I've always been kind of a go with the flow type person. So this really wasn't very hard for me personally to accept and get on board with. You gotta go with the flow when you have a baby. I feel like it's kind of common sense that babies dictate your schedule. You don't tell them their schedule. For example, so it was Adam and I's wedding anniversary and Lincoln was probably six months old and we had just started giving him some solid foods. So he had eaten some banana and apparently the banana was not sitting well with his stomach. <laughs> and right before we were supposed to leave to go drop him off at Adam's parents' house for one of the first times that we were leaving him really, he threw up everywhere. <laughs> and so we decided to stay home. We had a day night at home. We were gonna go to a Mexican restaurant, so we decided to like make queso and some margaritas, and we sat on the patio, and we had Lincoln out there with us, and he ended up being fine. It was not a big deal, but you have to go with the flow and make it work for you. Same thing with like the terrible twos, all those tantrums that they're having, which are totally healthy, totally on par for their development, but you really have to go with the flow with that. If they are throwing a tantrum and you're in public, you can't just keep forcing them to sit at that restaurant. You kind of have to like take them outside, stay calm, help them through it because you can't just do what you wanna do when your child's having a tantrum. Basically what I'm saying is you have to learn to let go and your plans might not always go how you want them to go and sometimes it sucks. That's just being a parent. <laughs> All right, this is one that it took me so long to finally accept and realize it's that you have to take care of yourself too and a shower does not count as self-care and i know in those early days of postpartum where you're just barely getting a shower and that's all you're doing for yourself that can still be like a refreshing thing but make sure that you are doing more than just showering because showering is things that most people get to do as just like a part of their normal routine. It's, a, it's just a necessity. And for moms, they're considering it self-care for them and it's not. <laughs> Going to the bathroom by yourself is not self-care, okay? <laughs> you moms of multiple kids and little babies and toddlers, I'm sure you can relate to what I'm talking about. 
going to the bathroom with like kids on your lap or like literally sitting on the toilet with a baby on your boob, you will end up with postpartum depression. You will end up burnt out. You will end up unhappy and resentful and oh, it's just take care of yourself. Go do something for yourself. Go to Target by yourself, that's what I do. I go walk around the aisles of Target by myself. I get a coffee, I get a snack, and I buy a couple things for the kids, just whatever we need. If we need groceries, if they need pajamas, I don't know, clothes, nail polish, a face mask. I get myself a couple things and then I come home and I feel so refreshed and I usually do my nails when I get home or I do that face mask or I take a bath and I have a glass of wine and that's my self care day and I do that whenever I need it. I need Adam to take the kids to the grocery store and I stay home and do a workout, then that's what I do. And if I need to have a minute to myself so that I don't lose it because I'm getting frustrated, I ask for that. I'm telling you guys, prioritize yourself because you can't take care of your kids if you are not at your best. This is a huge thing that I wish I had known before I had kids because it really wasn't until after Waylon was born that I finally started getting some time alone and doing some things for myself and I feel so much better. All right, number four is that communication is key. This is so important, you guys. So with your husband or partner, boyfriend, whatever, this is just so important in those early days, especially when you're both sleep deprived, the baby's up in the middle of the night and both of you are exhausted. This is super important that you guys have really open communication because yeah, people don't do as well when they're sleep deprived. Specifically me, I do not do well when I'm sleep deprived, but I think it, it goes for most people. So you have to be super, super intentional about communicating your needs and making sure that you're not getting resentful at your partner, especially if you're breastfeeding, because that tends to happen to a lot of moms if they're up in the middle of the night breastfeeding and their husband isn't helping them out and you're watching them sleep and you're just like, <sighs> and then the next day the husband's like, oh, I'm so tired. And then you're just like, I want to strangle you <laughs> because you're like, you were sleeping all night and I was up with the baby and like, how could you be tired? And like the mom just snaps and like freaks out. And then he's like, well, what did I do? I don't understand. And it's like, you have to communicate. So here's an example of what you could say. You're supposed to use I need language. So. You wanna say, I need you to get up and change the baby's diaper and bring him to me so that I feel supported during the night. So I feel like that's like a perfect phrase. It tells them exactly what you need, change the diaper, bring them to me, and then you can go back to sleep. You know what I mean? Like that way I feel like you're up with me. I feel like you did something. That way I'm not mad at you. <laughs> And it might sound kind of silly, but it really helps. Adam did that with me without me even asking him to the first few weeks of Lincoln's life. I think he did the same with Waylon too. Um, and then after I started like kind of getting up more because like my stomach was healing and I wasn't feeling it, like I was just like healing postpartum. So I, I was feeling better and I started getting up, but then I started getting really sleep deprived because it had been so long that I was getting up. So I asked him, okay, I need you to get up with me again. I'm really tired. Can you do it? And he was like, sure. And he got up and he changed the diaper and he helped me out in the night. And I still was feeding him obviously because I was breastfeeding, but it felt good to just have him up in the night with me like we were a team. And so you just have to communicate and be very open with each other because babies can be hard on marriage and you don't want it to break you apart at all. You want it to like bring you together and you want to feel like a team, so. Okay, this is another one that took me so long to figure out and it is find mom friends. So I didn't really get any mom friends until recently. I, I did know moms. <laughs> They were mostly family. It was mostly like sisters-in-laws and friends that like weren't super close to me We didn't see each other very often at all. I was the first in my friend group to have a baby I just didn't make any new friends really and so I finally joined a Small group at my church. That's a mom group and we just go out and have dinner after our kids are in bed And so it's very guilt-free husbands just kind of stay home while the kids are asleep and the moms get to go out and have dinner with each other and chat 
and talk about mom stuff so it's very good for me and i'm really glad that i found that group definitely find yourself some people around you that you can relate about mom stuff with all right the next one is get out of the house and this is an important one especially if you're a stay-at-home mom especially if you're an introvert like me get out of the house force yourself to get out i know it's hard it's especially hard for me uh, specifically, I'm not trying to make myself sound like I'm special or something, but uh, Lincoln has autism and he tends to run away a lot. He gets overstimulated in public. He gets very excited, he'll run away from me. And I literally can't get his attention because he doesn't respond to his name a lot of the time. He won't listen to me at all. And I have to literally chase him and grab him or he won't come back. So it's a little bit stressful to go to the park. I tend to not do the park alone with both kids. I still get out of the house. I still will do the grocery store any store that has a good cart that i can fit both kids in i like to do because they're totally fine in the cart i'll do my mother-in-law's house anywhere that has like a fence if i can find a playground that has like a good fence then i'll go there i'll go to my sister-in-law's house and use her pool i'm fine doing that with both kids because there's tons of cousins that can help me out too with the kids yeah definitely get out of the house go see some people get out of the house i know it's easy to get into like your routine where you're just at home and you're kind of like why would i put makeup on if i'm at home and why would i leave the house when i can just stay here and there's nothing to and like then you kind of get into like this rut of like never getting dressed and ready and never going anywhere and meeting people and then all of a sudden you're kind of like in this weird funk i've been there but just because you're a stay-at-home mom doesn't mean that you can't go do stuff so go take your kids to the library Go do something and make sure that you are getting out because it's really important for your mental health to get outside and get some sunshine. <laughs> All right, so my next one is don't compare. Don't compare your baby to other babies. Don't compare your postpartum to another mom's postpartum. Don't compare your house to another mom's house. Don't compare your relationship with your parents like your kids grandparents don't compare that grandparent relationship to another person's grandparent relationship don't compare your breastfeeding journey to another mom's breastfeeding journey comparison is literally the thief of joy and don't get caught up in that just don't if you're on social media and you're watching other moms and it looks so easy for them and you're wondering like why is it so hard for me it's because it's a highlight reel you're literally watching everyone else's highlight reel and you're just seeing the 15 seconds of a happy video or the quick picture of a happy smiling baby and a happy mom and you're not seeing everything else that's going down behind it you're not seeing the behind the scenes you're not seeing all the hard stuff that they're going through the exact same thing as you so don't compare don't compare don't compare <laughs> all right i just have two more so this next one try not to hate me on try not to um leave me mean comments about but <laughs> Basically, this is a hard one, but I know that a lot of people will probably relate to me on this. So your feelings towards your pet may change when you have a baby, and I wish I had known that. So basically, before I had kids, I was obsessed with my dogs. I have three dogs, and they were my life, they were my babies, they were basically my children. We got them Christmas sweaters. I mean, they slept in our bed. They were literally our children. And I, don't, I wouldn't say it was like as soon as Lincoln was born. Actually, maybe it was. <laughs> I remember being very excited to bring Lincoln home from the hospital to meet the dogs. He wore a little dog sleeper specifically on the way home from the hospital because I knew he was coming home to meet the dogs and I was very excited about that. But then it was like they were used to jumping on the couch. A couple months before we brought Lincoln home, we were starting to train them that they weren't allowed on the couch anymore because of Lincoln. They were sort of getting used to it and everything, but then it was like any time they jumped on the couch, I was like, don't touch Lincoln. Any time they barked and woke him up, I was like coming for them. Like I was so not okay with that. I was just like a mama bear. Like I was just in mama bear mode. Like Lincoln's my baby now and you don't wake him up and you don't like, <laughs> you don't hurt him. Don't come near him. Like I was just like very, 
mama bear about it. They were never like vicious towards him ever. Like they have always been so sweet towards him, but it was just very like accidental bumping, like jumping on like near the couch, like on the couch near him or like, like I was just very like stay away from my baby. Like I said, waking him up, I was very like, don't ruin his nap. So anyways, I started to just be like over the dogs and I just want to warn you that that might happen. I know it's happened to other people. I've heard other people talk about it and then I've seen comments on those videos of people being like, yes, that happened to me, that happened to me. I've seen hundreds of comments of people saying it, that it happened. And so now the kids are both toddlers. They love the dogs. They give them treats. They wrestle with them. They love the dogs and the dogs love them. And I am starting to come back around I'm fine, <laughs> I didn't like, I mean, it's not like I hated them. I was just very like different than I was before because before they were like my babies. Then Lincoln was my baby. And then I was like, no. And now I'm like, okay, come back. Like now I'm like cuddling with the dogs again on the couch at night. Once the kids are asleep, I'm like, okay, get up here and cuddle with me. Like, you know, I'm getting back to being my normal self again. I feel like I'm not like as protective. I'm not as like, Get away from me now i'm like come cuddle with me <laughs> you're supposed to take a selfie lay down boomer say cheese <laughs> come here <laughs> you're way too big for this couch what is that face what is that face So it does get better. I just want you to know because I went through a stage where I just yelled at them constantly. I was like over it, but now it's better. So don't come at me. Please don't leave me hate comments. <laughs> but I just wanted to warn people that are obsessed with their dogs. I know some people might stay obsessed with their dogs. And um, I hope that your child is still more important to you than your dog. But, um, <laughs> Some people might have the same experience as me. So I just wanted to put that out there for anyone to, um, to relate with me on. So I have one more. Okay, so my last one is that all of your feelings are valid. So postpartum can be a very crazy time. Your hormones go all wacky. And uh, I remember with Waylon, from about 38 weeks pregnant to six months postpartum, I did not cry. I did not shed one tear, not even when Waylon was born, not at all. I didn't, I did not cry once during that postpartum. And I thought there was something wrong with me because I didn't cry at all, but I was just happy. I was so happy. I didn't cry once. And then with Lincoln, my first baby, I cried a lot, like not a weird amount, I think a normal amount. I would say I probably just had like baby blues. No like depression or anything, but I just cried because I was happy. Like I just like looked down at him and was like, you're so freaking cute. How are you even real? And I would cry. And then I would cry because breastfeeding hurt or was hard. Or I would just cry because I was really tired and I was up in the middle of the night and I was like, why aren't you feeding right? And so I would just like have all those normal emotions. But those were like my two postpartum experiences. And then with Waylon, I had this weird like postpartum depression almost thing happen when I was weaning him. So he started dropping feedings around six months postpartum. It wasn't like he was completely weaned or anything. I didn't wean him at six months. I weaned him around like a year, but he started slowly dropping the feedings around six, seven, eight months he would drop like one feeding two feedings so like i would say around six or seven months postpartum i started to feel really like weird pulled it and <laughs> as they're dropping feedings your hormones get all out of whack too and that's the thing like you can actually go into like postpartum depression from weaning post weaning depression and so that's a whole nother thing so i'm just saying all of your emotions are valid Everything is valid. I think it was actually like seven months postpartum was the first time I cried because I was weaning and I was like, I don't want him to wean. Like I was like all upset and I just started feeling kind of wacky and I was like, this is weird. So yeah, post weaning depression's a thing, postpartum depression's a thing. 
if you guys start to feel weird and you need to see someone that's totally normal like it's all normal i've been in counseling before like it's all normal so guys it's all valid it's all valid okay all right guys i think that's it for this video i can hear waylon starting to wake up so i'm gonna go grab the boys but thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and i will see you guys in my next one bye guys